Father, we thank you for your presence here tonight. Lord, I thank you already just begin to move and to touch people's lives. Lord, I ask you for more right now. Lord, in every person's life, I ask for the more to come, Lord. That you just begin to unlock and unfold more and more revelation of who you are, of your goodness, of your mercy, your grace. So tonight's our tag team preaching night. Who's excited about that? I am. I am. So it's going to be fun. we got three people that's going to minister. Before we do, let me just hit the announcements one more time. So tomorrow night at 7 p.m. is what? It's our worship night. Don't forget some intercession in there. Worship intercession. We're going to be praying over this region. We're going to be singing over this region. God has such a destiny in this region, all of the churches in this region. And we're just going to sing blessings, release declarations. I don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but I know it's going to be very, very powerful. So that's tomorrow night. Healing in prophetic rooms. So if you've not been to those, um, we're going to run six to just before service. Um, we have teams here to minister. If you want to come in and receive prophetic ministry, the teams will prophesy over you. If you want to receive healing, um, they'll be praying for healing. So you're welcome between six, and I would say we'll cut it off about 645. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, if you're in our ministry school, I don't know, uh, we may need, still need some team members to come in. So uh, let myself or Hope know um, if you want to be a part of that. So, Also, our membership class on the 7th, we have moved that to the 13th. Immediately following service on November 13th, if you're interested in learning. 14th. Oh, I'm sorry. Why did I say the 13th? This says whatever. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. It's on the screen. Cherish did it right. So the 14th. The 14th. Wow. I don't know. I'm so confused right now. Anyway, if you're interested in being a part of the whale or learning more about the whale, um, there's some distinct differences um, that we have. So if you come to that class, we're just going to begin to open that up. And then we're going to start releasing um, sometime probably January time frame, just some next steps of growth for new people coming in. Um, we're going to have a foundations and a freedom track. So while we've kind of been on the heels of deliverance um, with just so many people needing free as new people come in, we're just going to bring them into a process that lays a foundation and lays a freedom in their life. So by the time they, they're with us for a few months, they will have walked through um, deliverance as a normal process, not just such a massive event. I mean, this week, we uh, think we've had 11, 11 or 12 meetings because uh, we did a group meeting on Tuesday night of deliverance. I mean, God is just massively, powerfully transforming lives and setting people free. So some of us were in a long deliverance today, about four hours. Uh, but God is so faithful. He delivers his people. We persevere through that process. So um, children's play rehearsals, November the 7th, right? November the 7th, right there on the screen. Uh, uh, follow or two, two to four. So, and then we have parents' day out or parents' night out on the twelfth. So, anyway, let's move into our tag team preaching. We got three preachers tonight. Wave at us, preachers! Come on, let us know who you are. Robert Bickle, come on down. And just for time's sake, I'm not going to just do a lot of introductions. Love these guys. Y'all know who they are. So, have fun. Thank you. So, <laughs> so, two weeks ago, yeah, about two weeks ago, uh, the three of us were staying together, and when Mike asked us to do this, my first thought is, like, this sounds like a bad bar joke. So, because you've got a counselor, a teacher, and a hairdresser all walking in here together. <laughs> so, so, luckily, one is a paid listener, and the rest of us just talk a lot. And so... <laughs> So, my name is Robert. Uh, I'm the hairdresser. Uh, so, so, if any of this makes sense, it's all God. But I do have to say, Seth, your uh, word earlier about, um, was it reclaiming the, or remembering the testimony? So, that is exactly what I'm kind of going into. 
So it's telling the story that God's given you, but all of it, telling the whole story of what God's done. And so a lot of times we get captivated um, by other people's stories, and I love other people's stories, but a lot of times we forget the power of our own. So, um, Cherish, you want to go the verse slide? So I absolutely love the full story of this. This is the story where um, Jesus deals with the man that has a legion of demons. They get cast out. They go into the pigs and stuff like that. There's a lot of great stuff in that whole story. But I love the part right after he asks Jesus. I, he's, he's wanting to go with Jesus. Um, he's wanting to get on the boat with Jesus. He knows going back into his community how they see him. He's been treated unique ways. He, I, he, he has a stigma that he's going to have to go face. They're going to see the change, but it's going to take some time for people to believe the change. So Jesus says, no, go home to your family and tell them everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. So a lot of times in my own life, when I'm talking about what God's done in my life, you know, I'll hit highlight bullet points and stuff like that with people, but I don't tell the whole story. I kind of adjust the story depending on the audience. You know, it's just like, okay, you know, they, they, can, they can handle the full Holy Ghost moment, or they, eh, I don't know if they're ready for all of it yet. But, you know, Jesus tells this guy, he just got delivered, you know, and, you know, just totally shook the, uh, the hillside with all these pigs just racing into, you know, the sea and everything. Go tell them everything. And, you know, and that's, that's risk. To tell that story is risk. You know, because it's like, you know what? You want me to what? You know, it's like, I, you know, so. So anyway, for me personally and our family, we've had a lot of great God encounters. Um, I love telling the ones that my wife has uh, had in her life and everything. So like, you know, if I'm talking to people, let's see here. God, uh, see here. Um, so my, one of my favorites, and you'll have to get her to actually tell this story. It's a lot better. But God actually told her that she was going to marry me. She laughed. She laughed. <laughs> it, was, it was a risk. <laughs> if you get a chance, ask her about it. Her, her telling the story is a lot better than me. Um, I love telling the story of Cherish going to Africa. It's exciting to hear her story when she goes to Africa. But I love the fact that my wife went over there, she dealt with a witch, and she got to see some blind eyes healed. Fascinating. I, that is completely out of my norm. But then I remember every single day, I've got two very cool miracles running around by my feet, my children. Now, if you count all five, they're miracles in themselves. You know, just the fact that I have a family that size. So, Gavin, our nine-year-old, you know, at two, was it two, three? He had an anaphylactic reaction. You know, he gets tested. He's allergic to everything under the sun. We start going into this time, this, this two-year period where we're seeking God's absolute best for our life. You know, all of a sudden, our 11-year-old Addie, she was younger, comes up to her mom, just says, hey, mom, I want to pray that you can eat something good. Cher, she deals with some um, gluten issues and stuff. Couldn't eat banana, so Addie's like, I'm going to pick a banana because I want you to eat a banana. <laughs> so Cher, she eats a banana later that night. She's fine. God is raising faith in our life. The very next day is when we're having Gavin's five-year uh, checkup. In that meeting with uh, the doctor and stuff, the only thing that went red on his, the scratch test or whatever was the control. Two years before that, every single thing lit up. And so because he's running around my feet all the time, do I intentionally take that for granted? No, not intentionally. And so that was just the beginning of things. We get pregnant with Nehemiah. You know, he in of itself is just an amazing blessing, but the fact that he's with us is amazing. So we're heading to the doctor. It's an exciting day. We're going to find out what we have. 
We're going to find out if it's a boy or a girl. You know, I, I do not like guessing. The, the people who want to wait until their kids are born, that's great. I don't like buying a whole bunch of neutral stuff just in case. And, you know, <laughs> so in the middle of this consultation, we're, you know, seeing at this moment this woman's, the whole air of the room just kind of gets sucked out. And they tell us that he has a CPAM. They rush us over to St. Luke's or tell us to go immediately over there. Doctors give us every worst case scenario possible. We start going into a moment of prayer. We're praying for our son's life because this is literally what it's coming down to. They're talking about possibly sending us to Cincinnati where they can have like, you know, surgery while he's still in my wife's belly. You know, and I'm like, I'm fascinated that doctors can do that. You know, and then one night, before we knew more about what was happening, God woke me up in a dream. This has only happened to me twice, but I literally see angels standing around my bed. I see one of the angels reach up into this light that's shining on my wife, pulls out what I saw to be the right lung, and plunge it into my wife's belly. Now, in that moment, I'm like, done deal. This is good. Cherish didn't have the same dream. <laughs> God didn't speak to her that way. And so I'm holding on to the whole story that was told to me. And literally for nine, well, I guess by that point it had been seven months, she and I are working through the process of trusting the truth that God's spoken. I had a reality that was shared with me that I'm trying to, I was literally trying to speak into the moment, and it's actually a very hard moment for us to, to work through. She wanted me to hold on to it, but she was wanting God to give it to her too. And so sometimes in the middle of moments where there's tension, when there's misunderstanding, when there's moments where people just are not on the same page, we leave out the whole story. We don't step into those moments because it's hard. So his birth comes. We had worship movie, music playing and stuff like that. And li- we might get the, uh, Cherish wrote a blog about it, so we might get that back up uh, where people can read it. <laughs> but the whole room shifted when he was born. Cherish actually called him by name, called life. We felt the room shift in that moment. So about three months go by, and we have to, we're at Vanderbilt. The head doctor over the, Uh, ECMO department is um, our doctor. This is what he deals with. And so CT, or the the donut looking machine, um, (laughs) looks like Stargate to me. And uh, (laughs) so they do it. And literally, babe, you want to put up the next slide? Over here is what a baby looks like with CPAM. The doctor who's been doing this for many, 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 many years came to us, shaking his head, went back downstairs, asked another radiologist to look at it with him. And he said, the only thing curious about him is that there's a pocket in his lung where it looked like something might have been. He didn't say that, but he was left with this moment of, you don't ever have to come back and see me. And so we tell that part all the time. We love that part. The process of God leading us to that part, sometimes we leave out because sometimes it's uncomfortable to speak to people about the reality of the kingdom of heaven breaking into our world and releasing heavenly moments that shift the atmosphere, that changes my son's life that allows my son to run around here like it's an Indy 500s. <laughs> and if he ever looks at you with a blank stare, just say, ready, set, go. <laughs> so I think my 12 minutes is up. That is really good, the whole story. I mean, I think it's just profound because that, is, that really speaks to me because there's so much that I leave out in some of these stories out of, you know, where they comprehend, especially some of our deliverance stories. And we don't go blab everything, but gosh, the whole story, that's just what got me thinking. Good job. <laughs>